Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you learned how to finish the initial load for your MySQL source, as well as how to enable the initial load for a second source. The SFDC source is now ready to be synchronized from the MDM side of our solution. In this video, we're going to walk through the steps we need to take in order to prepare our SFDC to MDM process for synchronization. Right now, the only piece that we've set up is the start shape for our SFDC to MDM process. In order to bring it all together, we need to take the same steps we took while setting up the MySQL to MDM process. We will start by configuring the MDM connector shape, where we will reuse the connection component that we created for our MySQL MDM connector shape. We will then import the profile from the MDM platform used in our contact model. Next, we will need to set up our SFDC to MDM map where we will transform the data from our Salesforce structure into our contact model structure. Even though they are both XML profiles, the data coming from Salesforce is not the same structure as our contact model. Once we've completed this process, we will then be able to import the Salesforce data into our MDM solution. Since most of this is going to be a review of what we learned earlier in class, I'm going to hop right back into it and show you how to complete exercise 18, 19, and 20, where I will add the MDM connector shape, add the map shape, and configure all of the mapping details. I will then do a demonstration of how the data flows into MDM and how some of our restrictions work. Once those exercises are complete, I'm going to go through exercise 21, which is a review of everything we did to show you how the data coming in from both of our sources affects our golden records. As always, feel free to follow along in your activity guide and you will have plenty of time to complete these exercises after the video is complete. So the first thing that we need to do is navigate back into our Atomsphere platform and open up the SFDC to MDM process. We can find this over in our component explorer over here on the left hand side and we can see it's within our processes area within our master data management one folder. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that process to open that up. Once again, you may need to click on the lock and edit button in order to actually edit this. Um, if that is the case, go ahead and click on that now. The next thing I'm going to do is open up our connector shapes palette here. And I like just pulling on a generic connector to start so that we can select it within our connector shape window. From here, you can simply type in MDM in this drop down menu and find the MDM connector shape with ease. For our action, we're going to go ahead and select the upsert, just like we did in our MySQL to MDM process. And since we've already created our connection component earlier with the MySQL to MDM process, we can go ahead and click on the choose button. And we can actually look for the MDM training connection component. Once you find that, you can select it so that it goes into the connection area. Now it's important to understand that we will need to create a new operation because that's where we identify which source this information is going to be connecting to. So to create the new operation, I'm simply going to click on the little plus sign within the operation field, which is going to open up a new operation window. From here, I'm going to give this a new title and this will be SFDC contact upsert. And just like we did with the MySQL to MDM process, we're going to go ahead and click on the import button. This is going to allow us to choose the connection that we're going to use, as well as identify the source that we're going to be connecting to. So what you can do to select your connection is click on the little magnifying glass icon to the right of the connection field. And then we are going to search for the MDM training connection component. And then for our source, I'm going to type in SFDC. Now it is important that you, you type this incorrectly based off of the name that you created in your MDM platform. If you use lowercase letters for it, then you're going to need to use lowercase letters. Um, same thing for uppercase letters as well. In this case, I made sure mine were all uppercase and I'm going to go ahead and click next. In a few moments, you'll notice that it's going to let us identify our object type. Once again, we only have our contact repository and contact model, so we only have that option here. You can simply click next. And then finally, we have a success screen that shows us the request profile name. Once you see this screen, go ahead and click finish. You may notice that the name of the request profile 
has the same name as our other request profile we created for our MySQL source. So what you can do is if you'd like to change this name so that it matches your SFDC source, you can simply click on the icon of a pencil here to edit this profile. And then simply click on the name at the top here where it says the title. And instead of the two, you can always just type in SFDC so that you can tell it apart from your MySQL one. Go ahead and click on save and close. And once again, click save and close to go back to your connector shape window. Click OK to go back to your process canvas. And then finally, click on the save button to save this to your process canvas. So now that our two connector shapes are complete, we can now create our map and import the profiles from each. I'm going to start by dragging a map shape onto the process canvas. And then I'm going to choose the green plus sign so I can create a new map. I'm going to rename my map SFDC to MDM. Because my source and destination profiles are already created within my start and end shape connector shapes, I can then go ahead and click on the choose button to find the correct profile here. We know that the profile that we're going to be using coming from the Salesforce area is going to be coming in XML. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that as my profile type. And then I'll go ahead and look in my master data management one folder for an XML profile. The profile that we want to use is the Salesforce contact query response and simply click OK. Then for our destination profile, you can click on the choose button as well. And we want to select the new profile that we just created within our MDM connector shape. So for this, I'm also going to choose XML, open up the master data management one folder and find the MDM contact upsert request for SFDC. Always make sure to save this as often as you can to make sure that your changes are actually recorded in here and saved in case something happens. So that takes care of exercises number 18 and 19, which brings us to exercise number 20, where we can actually map our uh, source and destination profiles. Now you may remember from Boomi Essentials, there are two different ways to actually use the map shape. So the first way is you can simply do your mappings by dragging and dropping. So I can click, hold, and drag the ID field over and connect it to my other ID field. And once I drop it on top, you can see that they are now connected. You can look in the activity guide where I have a table there for you that allows you to see your source and destination designations. So ID goes to ID, account ID is going to go to account ID, and so on and so forth. However, if you're not in the mood to do this manually, you always have the option of using Boomi Suggest in order to do this in a more uh, dynamic or automatic way. In order to use Boomi Suggest, simply go to the upper left hand corner of the map screen and click on Boomi Suggest. In order to use Boomi Suggest, simply go to the upper left hand side of the map shape window where it says Boomi Suggest. From here you can see your high confidence, medium confidence, and low confidence matches. It says that it thinks it can map 12 of our uh, mappings at a high confidence level. So let's take a look at what we have. If you click on next, it will show you all of your high confidence matches. Right off the bat, we can see that it wants to map contact to contact. This we don't want. So you can simply click on the checkbox next to that to deselect that mapping. And then we also have contact ID that should be going to contact grid. We're actually going to click on that checkbox as well to deselect that. However, the rest of these in this list look good. So we're going to go ahead and click next. Our final screen is our confirmation screen, so we can take one last look before we do all of our mappings. And then simply click finish in order for all of the mapping to be completed. Now that my mappings are complete, I can simply click on the save and close button. I will click on the OK to confirm that that map is correct. And then I will save this to my process canvas. And then finally, I want to connect all of these pieces together so that we can finally do a test of our process. I'm going to add a stop shape to the end of my process to show that this is the end of my process. Once complete, I will then click save.
The only thing left to do is to test the process to make sure that the documents are flowing from our Salesforce source into our MDM repository. So I'll simply click on the blue test button and click the run a test button. Once your test has completed successfully, you can actually take a look at the documents by selecting any document along this left hand column and selecting which shape you'd like to look at it. You can see the connection data coming from Salesforce by clicking on the connection data tab and viewing the document with this view button. You can see what it looks like in the format coming straight from the Salesforce source. And you can also see what it looks like as it enters into our MDM repository. Once you're done exploring that, uh, that will conclude exercise number 20, where we mapped and tested our SFDC to MDM source. So now that the documents are successfully flowing into our MDM repository, let's go take a look at what those documents look like. So I'm hopping back over into my MDM platform where we can see that our repositories section actually has a couple updates. We can see that we have our same 10 golden records that we had from our MySQL to MDMs uh, process. However, we now have this other area that says quarantine with 17 total documents. So let's go ahead and take a look at that quarantine area. If I click on the stewardship tab, I can then click on the quarantine sub tab and we can see that we now have some entries into our quarantined area. We can see that right off the bat, we see we have a total entries count, and then we have an area that's broken down for the required approvals. And under that, we have two different types of approvals. We need approval on certain creates, and then we need approval on certain update. We can see for the updates, we know we already have 10 golden records. So within here, these 10 golden records matched some of the data coming in uh, looks like one for one. So we have uh, 10 existing golden records and all 10 would be updated from Salesforce. However, it looks like there are seven outstanding ones that are not within the MySQL database that are coming from Salesforce. So we might want to take a look at those in a little bit more detail. If we want to see more detail about these, we can actually click on this hyperlink timestamp next to each of these different records. This is going to open up a new window that gives you different actions to take and uh, a little bit more information about the record itself. We can see that it gives us uh, the entity ID here, the cause of the issue, which in this case it says create approval required, and it gives you a reason. So the reason says the source which submitted this entity requires approval to create a golden record. And if you remember earlier when we were setting up our sources, we actually went into the configurations and we made it mandatory that any creates or update requests coming in from our SFDC source would trigger this response. So essentially the system is telling us that we designated this as a source that needs manual acceptance uh, to accept these golden records. So from here we can see a formatted view of all of the fields that it wants to uh, insert into the the golden record area. We can also take a look at the original XML. We can see what activity has been done with this particular record and any tags that are associated with it. We can also take several actions from this view. We can delete the record, we can resubmit it, we can edit and resubmit it, or we can straight up approve it uh, from this view. Now at this point, we're not so sure that we want to actually accept these changes in here yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave these here for now, um, but we're actually going to work on installing some more tools that might be able to filter through the, this information a little better um, in order to add in some better validation and enrichment options. So that concludes exercise number 21. So now it's your turn to try it on your own. Make sure you take your time while going through all of these exercises. Um, some of these things can be a little tricky, and I want to make sure that you're seeing all of the same data coming in from your SFDC source, going into the quarantine area and things like that, as it was shown in the video. Once you've completed all four exercises, go ahead and feel free to start the next video.